today we will study about transpiration that is the loss of water in the form of vapors that occurs from the living tissues of aerial parts of the plant how the transpiration process differs from evaporation some of the points we have to consider for understanding the difference between evaporation and transpiration evaporation is a physical process and occurs on any free surface whereas transpiration is a physiological process and occurs only in plants evaporation any liquid can evaporate the living epidermis and stomata are not involved whereas in transpiration the water moves through epidermis whether it's cuticle or through the stomata so in the transpiration process living cells are involved and in evaporation both living and non living surfaces are involved transpiration involves various forces such as vapor pressure diffusion pressure or osmotic pressure whereas no such forces are involved in evaporation process so transpiration makes the surface of the leaf and young stem wet and protects from the sun burn whereas evaporation causes cause dryness of the free surface so transpiration is the loss of water in the form of vapors from the living tissues of aerial parts of the plant only a small fraction of water generally less than 5% is utilized in the plant development and metabolic process now we will study how transpiration is a necessary process in the plants as we know transpiration is called as or referred as necessary evil that is there are some advantages of transpiration that it controls the rate of absorption of water it has in mineral absorption and ascent of sap as you have studied earlier it also regulates the plant temperature and some are the some of the disadvantages of transpiration are nearly 97% of the total water absorbed by the plant get lost in the form of vapors transpiration often results in water deficiency the water deficit which causes injury in the plants by desiccation rapid transpiration causes leaf water deficit and somewhat temporary wilting many xerophytes have to develop structural modification in order to reduce transpiration by developing thick hypodermis reduction of leaves reduction of stomatal number and sunken stomata deciduous trees have to shed their leaves to check transpiration the process of transpiration is unavoidable because of the anatomical structure of the leaves since stomata are required for gaseous exchange in photosynthesis as well as in respiration the loss of water vapor through them cannot be avoided therefore it is truly called transpiration as a necessary evil now the definition the loss of water in the form of vapors from the living tissues of aerial parts of the plant is what we call transpiration types of transpiration cuticular transpiration lenticular transpiration and the third one is the stomatal transpiration main sources through which water loss occurs and according to them transpiration is classified as 
cuticular that is the loss of water that occurs through the cuticle about 20% of the total transpiration takes place through cuticular transpiration next one is the lenticular lenticular transpiration that is the loss of water occurring through the lenticels of the fruits and woody stems all those a very less extent of water loss occurs through this stomata such a transpiration is termed as lenticular transpiration next comes the stomatal stomatal transpiration stomata are the minute pores confined to the epidermis of the green shoot and leaves and about 80 to 90% of the total water loss from the plants occurs through this process now we come to the stomata the stomata are the tiny pores present in the epidermal surface of the epidermal surface of the leaves as you can see in the figure young stem and certain fruits like banana citrus and cucumber they are also found in almost all the young aerial parts of the plant body a typical stoma is microscopic and usually consists of two kidney shaped guard cells surrounding a pore the guard cells in the family gramineae poaceae and cyperaceae are dumbbell shaped stoma is a singular and the stomata is the is used plurally the guard cells are usually much smaller in size as compared to the other epidermal cells a stomatal pore is generally elliptical in view the dimension of the stomatal pore varies from species to species pore size is wide enough to allow numerous water CO2 and O2 molecules to pass through in some species the two guard cells are surrounded by accessory subsidiary cells which differ in shape and size from other epidermal cells guard cells generally have thick walls towards pore and thin walls on the opposite side the adjoining cell walls of two guard two guard cells around pore are free and not attached with the each other these properties make them enable to stretch laterally during stomatal opening the one figure shows the opening of the stomata another where the stoma is closed endosmosis results in the opening of the stomata whereas exosmosis results in the closing of the stomata uh, about the mechanism involved in the opening and closing of stomata we will study in our next lecture now we come to the various types of stomata depending upon their association with the subsidiary cells the stomata is surrounded by two guard cells and the two guard cells are also surrounded by certain number of cells these are known as subsidiary cells accordingly the stomata are typed as anemocytic anisocytic parasitic diacetic and actinocytic as you can see in the diagram anemocytic such a stomata are surrounded by a limited number of 
cells which do not differ from other epidermal cells these are surrounded by a limited numbers of cells as you can see in the diagram and they do not differ from the other epidermal cells this type is known as anemocytic next come the diacetic diacetic the guard cells are surrounded by two subsidiary cells whose common wall is at right angle to the long axis of the pore and guard cells this is pore and these are the guard cells and the two subsidiary cells are being placed right angle to the pore so this type is known as diacetic parasitic parallel the guard cells of the stoma are surrounded by two or more subsidiary cells which lie parallel to the long axis of the pore and guard cells as is clear from the picture now comes the this one is for the after uh, anemocytic diacetic parasitic and then comes an isocytic what is an isocytic the two guard cells of the stoma are surrounded by three subsidiary cells as is clear in the diagram three subsidiary cells in which one is smaller and other two than the other two surrounded by three subsidiary cells one is smaller than the other two this type is called an isocytic last one is the actinocytic type the guard cells are, cells are surrounded by four or more subsidiary cells which are elongated radially like a star shaped structure radially to the stoma so this one is called actinocytic so again we can revise anemocytic surrounded by a limited number of cells which do not differ from other epidermal cells then comes diacetic right angle to the pore parasitic parallel to the pore subsidiary cells parallel to the pore and next one is an isocytic surrounded guard cell surrounded by three subsidiary cells one is smaller as compared to the other two and actino last one is actinocytic the guard cells are surrounded by four or more subsidiary cells which are radially elongated like arms of a star so this is all about the simple process transpiration in our next in our next lecture we will study about the mechanism involved in the opening and closing of stomata